Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 12th of December. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi slams Amit Shah over Nehru criticism. Pakistan rejects India's ST judgment on Article 370. PM Modi terms verdict historic. And Afghanistan excluded from COP28 for third time. Taliban calls exclusion regrettable. And offer all the details. A day after Home Minister Amit Shah blamed India's first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru for blunders on Kashmir, opposition Congress leader Rahul Gandhi on Tuesday gave a sharp retort to Shah for his comments and said that he has no knowledge of history and keeps rewriting it. Speaking to reporters outside the parliament, Gandhi said Nehru devoted his life to India and was in jail for years, which Shah is unaware about. Pandit Nehru ne matlab apni life de di. लाइफ दे दी हिंदुस्तान के लिए सालों जेल में रहे अमित शाह जी को शायद हिस्ट्री नहीं मालूम वो तो मैं एक्सपेक्ट ही नहीं कर सकता हूँ कि उनको हिस्ट्री मालूम वो तो हिस्ट्री को रीराइट करते रहते हैं while hailing the Supreme Court's verdict which upheld the abrogation of Article 370, Amit Shah on Monday blamed Nehru for accepting the ceasefire brocade by UN without taking the whole of the erstwhile princely state from Pakistani invaders in 1948. The parliament on Monday passed the two bills related to JNK. And after India's Supreme Court on Monday upheld the government's decision to abrogate Article 370 in Kashmir, Pakistan has raised objection over the verdict. Reacting to the judgment, Foreign Minister Jalil Abbas Jalani in a hurriedly called news conference said Pakistan rejects the verdict as India has no right to make unilateral decision on the territory. He said Pakistan will approach the United Nations and other multilateral forums apprising them of the futility of this decision. Notably, relations between New Delhi and Islamabad has remained sour since 2019 when Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government revoked the special status for the state of Jammu and Kashmir. The region is at the heart of years of animosity between the two neighbours ever since the partition of India in 1947. Jammu and Kashmir is an internationally recognised dispute which remains on the agenda of the United Nations Security Council for over seven decades. The final disposition of Jammu and Kashmir is to be made in accordance with the relevant United Nations Security Council resolutions and in accordance with the aspirations of the Kashmiri people. Meanwhile, India's PM Modi, hailing the landmark ruling, has said that the verdict has strengthened the spirits of Ek Bharat, Shreshth Bharat. In a blog post on Tuesday, PM Modi said Article 370 and 35A were major obstacles which ensured the people of Jammu and Kashmir never got the rights and development that the rest of their fellow Indians got. He said through the judgment, the court has upheld the sovereignty and integrity of India, something that is cherished by every Indian. Moving on, Baloch activists held conferences in London and Amsterdam this week to highlight rights abused by Pakistan and to reiterate their demand for freedom. A report. Members of the Baloch Human Rights Council held a conference in London this past weekend to address human rights violations in Balochistan. The activist highlighted the urgent need for international attention towards extrajudicial killings, enforced disappearances and inhumane torture of indigenous Baloch people and other minorities in the region. On the similar lines, the Baloch National Movement also organized a seminar in Amsterdam on the occasion of International Human Rights Day and reiterated the call for freedom from Pakistan's illegal occupation. Activists claim Baloch people have been targets of so-called military operations, ethnic stereotyping and abductions by the Pakistani state while it continues to exploit their natural resources.
They say the atrocities are carried out to instill fear and exert control over the region. The situation is not highlighted by the local media, forcing them to seek intervention through global platforms. Meanwhile, contractual government employees in Gilgit, Baltistan held a massive protest recently against low wages and to demand regularization. A report. Scores of contractual government employees in the education department of Gilgit, Baltistan recently staged a protest outside the office of the chief secretary to demand promised hike in their minimum wages. Highlighting discrimination, the protesters blamed the process to issue a notification for the increment as been facing bureaucratic blockage and excuses like low budget. They said they will keep on protesting for their rights which are being deprived to them. तो बजट नहीं है तो कम से कम ये है कि वो अपने अमारात में कमी करें ये जो असेंबली वाले अपने तनख्वाहों में 600 फीसद इजाफा कर चुके हैं इसमें कमी करें ये अपने ऐशियों में कमी करें लाकर हमारे जो गली मुलाजिमों के ऊपर बम गिरा रहे हैं महंगाई का People working in different government departments in Gilgit Baltistan often accuse that their long due salary hike and promotions are put on hold while the same allowances are given to their counterparts in Pakistan. ये अगर नहीं दे सकता है वजीर सेक्रेटरी खजाना जो है तो फिर उसको उस सीट पर रखने का कोई हक नहीं बनता मेरी नजर में and as no country has formally recognized taliban as a legitimate government humanitarian concerns have raised over afghanistan being left out of united nations climate negotiations for a third year in a row as the country grapples with worsening drought and floods, this year dozens of people have been killed in Afghanistan, which is one of the world's most vulnerable countries to climate change. Foreign officials have cited the Taliban's restrictions on the women as a reason for current isolationist policies, particularly its barring of girls and women from high school and universities. The Taliban administration has called its COP28 exclusion regrettable. Moving on, Sri Lanka's parliament has approved a hike in value-added tax to 18% from 15% ahead of the IMF preparing to approve the second tranche of $2.9 billion bailout for the crisis hit country. The VAT increase will boost the government's tax revenue to 12.5% of GDP next year from 9.1% presently, the state minister of finance told the parliament. Sri Lanka plans to implement the VAT hike with effect from January 2024 and also include fresh items such as fuel, fertilizer and cooking gas to increase government revenue by about $1.1 billion, which is essential to meet the IMF targets. The island nation is recovering from its worst financial crisis in seven decades. With the finalization of the first review from the global lender, Sri Lanka will receive about $334 million as a second tranche. Hundreds of excited comics and anime fans flocked the New Delhi edition of the Comic Con, the biggest pop culture carnival in the subcontinent, which was held in the Indian capital this past weekend. The annual event, which features platforms for comic book artists and gamers, provides an opportunity to fans to dress up in their favourite superheroes or comic book characters, which they describe as an escape route from their routine life. Comic Con got its start as a convention for comic book lovers who would come together to trade magazines, talk comics, explore science fiction and even dress as their favourite superheroes. With the rise of comic book films in 1990s, Hollywood too began showing up. I'm absolutely obsessed with the culture over here. I'm obsessed with pop culture, with gaming, with anime. I really love pop culture and uh, I've, I've been cosplaying ever since I first came here and I've made some beautiful memories and some wonderful connections with a lot of people. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.